Well, a lot of my big focus is really looking at issues like corruption and political risk and, and so on. So clearly, particularly across Southeast Asia, a lot of those issues are, are you know, problems with uh, countries like Indonesia or Vietnam or in general throughout the region. So those kind of issues are, are issues that need to be faced and dealt with. I think that there's, um, I think there's been a Obviously, the 2012 figures in relation to fundraising are slightly down on the 2011 figures. Um, I think that there's been a slight reticence in relation to investing into China. Uh, it's, it's a difficult market to, to make money from, although everybody sees the, both the micro and macroeconomic benefits. Um, India has always had institutional issues. You know, getting in there, making a deal and getting out with a profit is difficult for, for numerous issues. Um, in relation to Asia generally, I think what you're looking for is you know, the tenets of good investment still apply. Good managers who have an understanding of the marketplace, have footprints on the carpet, i.e. are in the jurisdictions, know the marketplace, are speaking to the local guys and are making good quality decisions, and making good quality investments at the right price and exiting at the right price. I, you know, the macroeconomics are there, the world economy is struggling, but I think that there's a lot of enthusiasm for Asia, particularly for Southeast Asia. Well, I think it's still to find the, the funds uh, in a good, uh, in a safe, uh, I don't know if we can say safe, but... Uh, in a safe environment and with best returns. So. The biggest challenge, I would say, uh, is being able to get good quality deal flow um, and be able to find deal flow that is uh, not overly competitive, so looking for proprietary angles. I think it's uh, continuing to find uh, lucrative investments, uh, improving the ability for the GPs to ma manage their portfolio companies. And I think uh, companies like us are trying to bring in solutions that help them take this to the next level so that they can continue to generate excess returns through more efficient management of their portfolio companies. Well, some will argue that there's too much money um, chasing too few investments. Um, that is certainly true in certain sectors, particularly I think the larger the deal size is, the more, um, more that problem exists. Um, there's smaller deals um, where uh, you know, in the sort of the under, 10, under $20 million bracket, there, there is uh, much less money chasing a large number of deals. Um, so the advantage of the funds are that they, they, they can have the deals themselves, but the disadvantage is you are dealing with less mature businesses, less sophisticated management um, in weaker market positions if they're in large industries. And of course, that has its own problems um, in terms of the risks behind the investments. Um, and the other is uh, that uh, you know, Asia is not immune to weak uh, equity, public equity markets. Um, you know, when, uh, and it's still very much the case when New York sneezes, other places catch colds. And um, if, uh, if there's a weak uh, global pr uh, public equity market, it means obviously the, the, uh, um, uh, the scope for uh, exit by IPO is somewhat reduced and valuations compromised. I think the biggest challenge is that um, returns are going to be lower systematically around the world. And uh, I think we all need to justify our cost structures and the inherent cost of uh, making these investments. And I think that's, that's a big fundamental challenge that the industry has to address. I think all investment communities are working through the after effects of the financial crisis and trying to work out what that meant in terms of business models and outcomes. I think in Asia you've got a very, very high level of expectation. It's a region that has a strong uh, reputation for growth and good outcomes. Within Asia, Australia is, uh, has become a very strong investment location in a world that's struggling to find good returns and safe havens. Australia really looks like an extraordinary place. So as part of Asia, the Australian story I think has been a very exciting one, one of growth, one of um, high returns with low variability in returns for most competitors and that story looks set to continue so it looks very exciting. Well I think um, from a private equity standpoint everyone is very focused on Asia. I mean people generally have invested in the US, invested in Europe and Asia is the next frontier. I think that there are some political and transparency challenges that investors are finding but uh, they seem to be working through those issues and it's an enormous place to invest so you kind of have to pick pick your regions and really understand the cultural differences and the way business is done. So I think teams on the ground are incredibly important and you really need to have locals who understand um, the local markets.